Okay, hello and welcome. I'm gonna do a Cobb-Douglas cost minimization problem here. So the exercise is two items. Find the cheapest way to get 12,000 units, given this production technology, given these relative wages in, in uh, rental rate of capital, and find the most output that can be produced for a cost of 720. Then I'm gonna do a couple different variations of this uh, similar problem. Okay, so let's set up our Lagrangian. So we are going to try to minimize labor and capital, or minimize the expenditure on labor and the expenditure on capital by choosing labor and capital, subject to the fact that we've got this production technology and we wanna hit this level of output. Okay, so we want to, we write up our Lagrangian, I'm gonna write this as my objective function minus the constraint, well, the penalty for violating the constraint times the constraint. Then I'm going to take my partial with respect to labor, my partial with respect to capital, partial with respect to this lambda. Okay, so the derivative with respect to labor, okay, that's going to be 9. And then it's going to be this 1 half times lambda times this 100. Then we'll reduce this power by 1 half. This k to the 1 half comes along for the ride. This is a constant that drops out. So I get 9 minus 50 lambda, 1 over the square root of labor, and then times the square root of capital. The derivative with respect to capital or the partial with respect to k is similar, so it's going to be 4. And then I'm going to get this 50 because it's going to be 1 half times that 100. This lambda, okay, so I'm going to have this L to the 1 half or square root of labor. It's going to be right here. And then 1 over the square root of capital. Why? Because you'll reduce the power by 1 when you take the derivative. Okay, the next thing you could do is you could solve this for lambda. You could solve that for lambda, and then you could substitute. Or... If you've done enough of these, you realize that you could think of this as like as a division bar, and on the left-hand side we have our ratio of we have like our ratio of of input prices, and the right-hand side we have our MRTS, our ratio of marginal product. And so if we recognize that, we know we're going to get like a nine over four. Okay, great. And then what's going to happen over here? Well, the fifty cancels, the lambda cancels. Then I'm going to get a so if you're Thinking about this as div as division, think of like this is the numerator, this is the denominator. I'm going to get uh, labor is going to be l to the minus one half minus one half, or l to the minus one. Oh, but that's got to be in the in the denominator. And then I'm going to have k to the one half minus minus one half, or that's going to go in the numerator. Okay, so that's justifying this part. Now I'm just solving for capital, and then I can substitute. So this right here, this is our tangency condition. Remember, when you're doing constrained optimization, you're trying to find the fact, the input uh, demands, factor demands here. What we want to do is we want to find our tangency condition and then plug that into the constraint to find our demands. Once you've got the demands, then you could plug them into the objective function, and that would give you your value function. In this case, that would give us the firm's cost function. We're not there yet. Now we're just looking to take our tangency condition, plug it into the constraint. So I'm doing that right here. So this is going to be 1,200 is equal to my production technology. I'm going to substitute for capital. And then just cleaning this up, I'm going to get, well, I'm divided by 100. I'm going to get 12. And then I'm going to have, let's see, this is going to be uh, square root of labor times square root of labor is just L. And it's going to have the square root of this stuff. OK, great. That's going to be, uh, this is going to be three halves multiply through. That'll be, uh, that'll be 24 divided by 3. That's going to be L. So that's where that came from. Okay, if I'm using if I'm using eight units of labor, how much capital am I using? Well, I can substitute eight right here and then solve for capital, and that'll be 18. Very good. Now we've got our amount of labor, we've got our amount of capital. We can plug this into our cost function. And actually, that what we're doing is that we're we're evaluating our objective at the op, at the optimals, and so this is our value function, the cost function. Turns out that's 144. So this tells us the lowest cost is 144 dollars using eight units of labor and 18 units of capital. All right, so now let's move on. The next thing is I'm gonna say, we want. Oh, let me remind us before we move on, let's find the most output for a cost of $720. Okay, so here I was trying to find the cheapest way to get at 1,200 units. So this is our cost minimization problem. Now I'm gonna find the most output for a cost of 720. All right, well, so now what I wanna do is I want to maximize the output subject to this requirement of not expending more than $720. This, is, this looks a lot like a consumer's utility maximization problem, but 
it's uh, but instead we're trying to maximize output given not violating this constraint that our expenditure isn't going to be greater than seven hundred twenty dollars. All right, so here's my Lagrangian. Here's my partial with respect to labor, partial with respect to capital, and then here's my constraint. The agency condition has to be the same. It's essentially the same problem except what's changed. Well, the orientation of what was the objective and what was constraint. And then also the fact that we're trying to hit a maximum of $720. Okay, whatever, but our tangency condition is going to be the same because this stuff, the derivatives are going to be the same. So as is our approach is going to be the same, we plug the tangency condition into the constraint. So that part's easy enough. So here I'm going to evaluate the constraint at this, uh, at this tangency. And so I'm going to substitute, in this case, I'm substituting for capital. So I'm going to take 9L plus 4K, but I'm going to instead write 9L plus 4 times 9 fourths L is equal to 720. The rest of that is just arithmetic, and we're going to solve, and we're going to find L, U, or L is going to be 40, capital is going to be 90. So given this amount of labor, given this amount of capital, how much output are we going to get? Well, for this, we need to evaluate our, optim our objective at our optimal. So I'm going to take 40, plug it in here. I'm going to take 90, plug it in there. And you'll find, oh, we've, we can produce 6,000 units of output. So what this tells us is the total cost of $720 is the most output. So for a total cost of $720, the most output we get is 6,000. OK, very good. So I want to do another couple problems that are kind of related. So suppose, suppose our production technology, Q is equal to F of LK, is equal to 40 times L to the 3 fourths times K to the 1 fourth, our wage is 12, our rental rate of capital is 4. Let's find the cost minimizing capital labor ratio. That's just asking you for the tangency condition, right? Cap the cost minimizing capital labor, labor ratio, that's what we found up here, right? Um, for this problem. It's coming from the tangency condition. So that, that verbiage looks scary at first. It's not. Uh, what's the minimum cost to produce 1,000 units? That's just the firm's cost minimization problem. And then if the short run capital is fixed at the level found in part B, what does the firm do to produce 1,500 units? All right, cool. So what we need to do is set up our firm's cost minimization problem. Notice I'm just going to like forget about part A for a second because I know what that's going to be. So here is our cost minimization problem. So minimize the expenditure on labor plus the expenditure on capital subject to this constraint. Here is going to be our partial with respect to labor, our partial with respect to capital. Where is that coming from? Okay, so the partial with respect to labor is going to be 12 minus, okay, 3 fourths times lambda times 40. Uh, this power gets reduced by 1, so it's going to be minus 1 fourth, and then this comes along for the ride, so k to the 1 fourth. What about over here? So this is going to be partial with respect to k, so it's going to be 4 minus 1 fourth, 40 times l to the 3 fourths minus k to the minus 3 fourths, because we're reducing this by 1. Okay. Uh, right, so then we're gonna we're gonna try to get our tangency condition again. We can realize this is gonna be my ratio of factor prices. This is gonna be my MRTS, and then just cleaning this up, we'll find again three is gonna be equal to three k over L, or k is equal to L. This is the answer to A. So I've indicated that right there. This is gonna be the optimal ratio of labor to capital. So now that we found our tangency condition, we're gonna plug this into our constraint and solve for our optimal inputs of labor and capital to minimize cost. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just going to replace, rather than L and K, I'm going to res respectively, I'm going to plug in either K for L or L for K. It's not going to matter. And either way, I'm going to find out labor is going to be 25, capital is going to be 25. You could, after you've solved for labor, go back and then substitute for labor for capital, and then you solve this thing for K and get 25. Or you could just realize, oh, we've got our optimal ratio of labor and capital is just one to one. Cool. So we've got 25 units of labor, 25 units of capital at a factor price of 12 per labor and four per capital. We're going to get a price of our total cost of $400. So this is the answer to part B. Answer to part B, what does it cost? What's the cost to produce a thousand units? Okay. So part C, if in the short run capital is fixed at the, at the level found in B, 25, what's going to be the cheapest way or what does the firm do to produce 1500 units? Cool. So what we want to do is we want to fix capital at 25 and we want to find the cost minimizing production for 1500 units. Great. So here's our problem. I mean, what's changed? We've changed this to 1500. Everything else is going to be the same. So, um, right. 
And then, matter of fact, once we found our tangency condition, we're just going to evaluate this at our constraint, except, except uh, we are we're fixing our level of capital at uh, at 25. Actually, so shoot, I should I should have uh, uh, I should have thought ahead. This this part actually, this part actually we're not doing. Why? What's wrong with this? Well, uh, we are not. We are not uh, finding the optimal ratio of labor and capital, are we? We can see this from my work right here. No, no. What we're doing is actually like I just kind of cross all this stuff out. We're starting right here, and we're just going to plug in the fixed level of capital and then solve for the optimal labor. So actually, like I should just like delete everything up here. We don't even need this. Our starting point is going to be is going to be uh, the constraint portion, this part right here. So we're going to substitute in. As a matter of fact, like what I really should have done is rather this whole stuff I should have started right down here so the amount of output we need is 1500 this is our production technology 40 times L to the 3 fourths and then uh, times the amount of capital which is fixed to the to the fourth okay so given this we have one equation and one unknown how easy can that be right so sure enough we go ahead and solve and you can get the optimal level of labor is going to be is uh, is this right here and then we can find our optimal level of capital Okay, or sorry, our optimal cost is going to be uh, this amount times 12 plus 4 times 25, and we'll find it's uh, 615 dollars and 14 cents, or whatever is the whatever is the currency. Okay, all right, very good.